Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I am Novata Katsala. This one is the work uh, with my teacher student, Robert Shaki, that uh, unfortunately is sick and attend the conference. Uh, the, the topic is about uh, something that maybe you already know, so since I'm not go opening the interpreters, but we are trying to move it a little bit further, not uh, a single interpreter, we are trying to open the main interpreters. Uh, the basic idea is uh, quite simple, more simple than expected. Okay, uh, let's consider what the concept uh, In computer science, we normally have one principle that is a uh, well known as Nike 10 principle. That means that uh, most of the people, 90% of the people, is uh, normally happy with, uh, with what they get, what they get from a tool, from an IDE, from a whatever. But the, there is this one ten percent that is not happy and have to code out its own solution. This is particularly true also in, in the case of the programming language. And we know that since uh, we are spending a lot of time in, uh, in, uh, in the efforts in developing uh, flexible solution, aspect oriented solution, context oriented solution, whatever solution, right? So the, the also domain specific languages. We have a plenty of general purpose languages, but we need domain specific just because we are not really happy about the two general stuff. Okay, this is what we are working on. Uh, the, the, normally it's too difficult to have, uh, or to tailor our work uh, to a specific uh, solution, so we want to have something more general. Uh, let's look at something in the literature. In uh, 2009, Tanta was uh, pointing out the one's important problem. The, if you consider a language with classes, normally when you are looking at the implementation, what happens to an object is that you have one uh, single structure in between this, and this normally is just one table with a field for uh, each entry of the of the of the, field of the, of the, of the table. So this normally is quite good. Uh, it's a good compromise for the performance when you have a small class with just two fields, uh, and this is. It's good, you have just two fields, this one are normally used. But this uh, is not always the case when you have a large class uh, where there is a lot of fields and not all of them are used at every time, like in the case of the class person. In this case, uh, you are at least wasting space in the organization of your video. You know. Okay, this one is uh, when you are implementing any sort of a language, you are not considering all corner cases. You are just giving the best solution that you can provide for most of the case. The famous 90% of the cases. This one is the 10% of the cases. There are work around, people are doing something about that. They normally, what do they do is they not write the full list of fields inside the person class, but they are just putting a sort of the forwarding link to something else. Somewhere maybe the rules. Uh, the, the, this one is a word that you <coughs> often nowadays. So you have rules for the person that is a student, rules for person that is a, a worker, and you have a specific field inside another structure, and you have to deal with that manually. This one is the main trade-off. So you have a workaround, but normally you do that uh, manually. Or you don't have any support by the compiler, you don't have any type checking, you don't have any anything supporting that. But this one is one case, but if you look at the after the literature you find a lot and probably you find a, a found the some tool when you was programming it. For example, Chiba in ninety five in the open source class uh, stuff uh, in the open source class uh, paper was speaking about the origin persistence. This is something that everyone wants. Uh, but normally it's not inside the language, it can be done through the library. But then you lose in this in this case, you lose the type checking, for example. If you do that through a library, you lose any sort of support from the runtime environment. And uh, the, the, the work around which I was proposing was the compile time inflection. That works. That, uh, but it's something external to the language, uh, tailored on the specific problem. You have to do your meta object uh, and uh, you have to write whatever you need in order to support these. More recently, people at our, our call, Wurtinger, was looking at the, the dispatch of the types in the case of the expression. So you have the class, you have the, the float, but you have also integer, you have double. And of course, the class is uh, declined in many specific implementations. You want to use the right one in order to speed up your performance. 
But in order to choose that, normally you have a lot of checks to do. Uh, the people at Oracle, well, this one is time consuming, normally you have just four, five, something like that. But uh, if you have uh, some language with a lot of that type, or you have the possibility to extend the, the operation within your home, but that uh, I mean, could be a problem as well. Uh, the people at Oracle was doing a sort of clear writing in order to specialize immediately to type and base it on this. This is a basic idea behind the trap for in some sense. Also, people at Python uh, was using a sort of uh, Cheat just in terms of power in order to solve this kind of problem. But uh, in general, all the solutions are to work around in this case. <coughs> uh, what we do is, uh, okay, we have a language, we find a problem that is not really a problem, it's just a corner case that we want to do it better. Right? It's not really a problem. Maybe problem is a bad word in this case. But uh, you, you can uh, study your own solution and you can implement it uh, inside the language, uh, it from outside it, but uh, at the end you are just tailoring your own solution on the specific problem you have. Maybe also developing tools for supporting this, as in the case of compiled language. I have to say that normally I'm not uh, working inside the Oracle and writing my tree revising system just in order to specialize uh, my out operation or stuff like that. So what we need is something more flexible, or at least uh, language agnostic. Uh, let, let, let me use this term. What, what I mean is that uh, I don't want to be bound to a specific uh, uh, language. I want just to be inside the interpreter, and it doesn't matter what happens on the top of me. I want just to provide a mechanism that the user can use and adapt at uh, its needs the language. Okay, our idea, our possible solution which we are proposing is just to move the reflection, not anymore in the language or in the interpreter that is interpreting the language, but uh, a legal blue in the interpreter that is uh, in some way generating the interpreter as well. This is turning around, this uh, idea turning around uh, one context, uh, the open interpreter that I was saying at the beginning. Uh, we can say that an interpreter, uh, Upsilon, for the language P, can be considered open in the moment that it provides one interpreter, if you like, one methodological protocol uh, that permits to assess and to alter, of course, the, the components, the language components of the, the interpreter itself. And this, uh, of course, means that you can do a lot of reflective states, reflective state, uh, things on your language itself. Okay, let's see a little bit of details. We are in a specific context that is the two based uh, interpreters. Uh, what it means to be in this context? It means that uh, after you have written your application, uh, your interpreter is taking years and creating a fast three for that. Uh, the, the interesting things about the first three is the fact that, uh, well, it's a three, okay, that's nice, uh, but uh, uh, we have nodes, each node is uh, bound to the syntax in some sense, uh, and the, the semantics for the evaluation of that nodes is attached to the nodes itself. Okay, so everything is there just in order to do some adaptation. For example, Scala is a reflecting, is a giving you the possibilities to redefine the, the STDA past year of the problem just in order to do something like that. But it's still something specific of Scala. We are trying to do that in a more general way. The model changed, changed a little bit from this, it is quite manifest. And uh, we just added a couple of points, uh, we call them the UK, uh, to each node uh, where an external agent can attach itself. Uh, and when uh, the, the interpretation phase, whatever it is, is passing, is visiting this node, uh, the, the, the agent is performing the adaptation that we want. So basically, we have a before and after hook. We have several agents, possibly several agents connected with each hook. The interpretation is passing through that, and something happens. Of course, to realize this, we need something. For example, we need the ability to introspect inside the, 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 the interpreter itself. Or better, we need at least a, a way to decompose the interpreters in component language that we can manipulate or move other or stuff like that. Okay, given that, we are the developer of Neverland framework that has a, as a, as a mission to 
render, modularize as much as possible the definition of a language and the implementation of the of the of the interpreter or compiler to itself and the last but not the least the idea and the debugger for it. Uh, so we developed the open interpreter support inside our framework. Uh, so the, the idea the, 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 the idea of development is quite e easy. It's a, it's a put the, some some times back in the IT when uh, we are using the attributes of the grammars, right? So anything is uh, defined in terms of production of the grammars and the, the semantics is just something that is attached to the non terminals inside the other grammars. Uh, this one is quite a naive uh, view, but it uh, should be enough to understand what we do in this, uh, in this world. What happens is uh, we write our interpreter that is done once uh, in general, and uh, this is written in Neverland, uh, we have a compiler that is well, it's writing on Java sources and finally is creating a real interpreter that we call genetically NMG for the language added. When we want to run an application, what happens is that we pass the application source to this interpreter that is generating the cost. At this point, we are really ready to execute the, our application. And this one is, uh, as I told you before, it's just a pass tree and we are just visit it and doing stuff uh, depending on the grammar and on the, on the semantics of the language. Uh, at one time, what we have is uh, this organization, we have the Java Reaper machine, on top of this there is the Neverland Reaper machine, finally there is the interpreter and then the application running. The application running is a uh, model as a pass tree. Okay, what we do now is something more this one is the same organization, but just from the top, it's a lot of from the front. What happens is uh, this is uh, the, the model for the program, our class 3. Uh, at, the node, uh, at each node, there is a hook to hooks where we attach our agents. Uh, this is just a link for something that is running somewhere else. We do that through RMI, but it doesn't matter which is the technology. And uh, there is also, this is, this is our Neverland virtual machine, there is also the Neverland virtual machine that is providing the reflection API. So the agent is using this API in order to manipulate, <coughs> to have an effect on the nodes, on the single nodes. We can do that uh, selectively, so we can choose a specific node and do some uh, change at the, at the given point you know, in our program, or more, more in general, to everything inside the language <coughs> tailored uh, to a specific context. For example, we can say, okay, we have four, but we want to have a parallel four. We keep the syntax and we just change the semantics in order to spread it on several cores uh, in parallel or something like that. We can do that, we can do that during the, the, the execution. We had a, a demo at the last modularity about this, just to show in the feasibility of the idea. And uh, basically, uh, what we do is, uh, well, we don't need any more the agent since the agent is working on a single node, but we have uh, also the, the static version that is changing all the occurrences of this node. <laughs> okay, what is an agent? Uh, well, uh, the, the basic stuff could be an agent is a Java program. Okay, that's, that's could be nice. The important thing is that it's uh, uh, implementing uh, one contract that is just the one that is specifying what to do at the hook, at the specific, specific hook, before and after, as we want. Uh, we can write it in Java and use the, the, the model that we have provided, but uh, this means also that we have to be able to describe which node we want to select. This is still possible since we have a, a way that we call uh, three patterns uh, to describe them. We can call it to the, the, the Java program, but could be not uh, uh, really easy in some cases. So we wrote our DSL, that we call micro VA, and <coughs> this one is just in order to help you to select what you want to change, like in this case, uh, this one is uh, the example of the expression that we have at the beginning, so this one is a plus, it is a real expression, and uh, at some point we want to uh, add one agent, uh, a generic, uh, of any addition and one other, only to one addition that is identified by the left children that has the value for an entity that is four. Uh, okay, this is quite selective. The, 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 the system is uh, okay, this one are all nodes, are all additions, so potentially are all selectable. 
in our case in CISA we have this three description. We select in the first case this one, and also this one, but it doesn't matter. And in the second one where we are more selective and we say also we want a specific value for, for the organs, we are selecting only on the case. The engine is attached to the edge in this case, so the piece of the, of the part that is performing. The, the ones that is not, uh, is not doing anything, so this one is just a, a piece of the script that is uh, executed once, so it's uh, useful for running a change that affects the whole application, not just the, the example of the before of the four that we want, uh, should be turned to be a parallel for, for example. Um, given that, okay, this should be the idea, I hope uh, this is clear. What we did to prove it, well, the, the, as I, uh, we told before, we are using Neverland, so uh, our choice was quite limited since Neverland is uh, an academic project at the moment, uh, and, but we are in Neverland implementation, uh, yes, a JavaScript implementation in Neverland uh, that we use in this experience. We they realized all the experiment that I was uh, showing before. It was quite easy. We had also used the, 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 the mob for, for example, implement some debugging. Watching a video is quite easy with this approach. Uh, or to have uh, something that changed inside the, 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 the context of our interpreter just uh, because something has changed around the, the, the system. Okay. Let's look at the first example. This one is uh, the implementation in uh, JavaScript of the person, for example, not in, not in strange. Uh, we have uh, one uh, instantiation to the new constructor, the prototype instantiation. This one is the piece of Neverland code, this is slice called in Neverland that is implementing this uh, stuff. As you can see, this one is only the this one is the reference syntax that refer to the word line and this one is the semantic for the evaluation that is just uh, using an external library for storing uh, uh, for each object uh, one uh, entry for the field. Um, that is uh, the case where we are generating something dynamic as is a mesh map as you can see. So we want to get the other kind where uh, we have a fixed structure of JavaScript towards uh, the, the vice versa way and, and the one I was describing before. <coughs> One is the new uh, implementation where we are the, well, we, we rely on a different library just to be simple, but the idea is still the same. But what is important is that uh, we can write our own piece of code that is uh, choosing the point class that was the example that we had before that has just two fields and we want a fixed organization of that, just in order to be more fast and stuff like that. And uh, we do the change here, just for the evaluation phase. Uh, what happens is, uh, if you are going to change uh, something in a running program, what happens is that you are going to be already instantiated, right? So we have also to update uh, this part uh, that is done once. When we decide that we are going to the symbol to the object table for the old implementation, and we are changing everything. So that nothing, nothing exception. But this one is, uh, is the second example, of the, the one for the persistence, the one from Chiba. Similarly, we have uh, the, the, initially we have the persistence class instance that we want to generate, and we are going to replace it with a, a more specialized screen. Okay, I think we have run a little bit much. By the way, uh, threads to applicability are also concluded if you like. Well, uh, the, the, this kind of stuff is quite delicate. We can both everything at any moment. Uh, you are just playing with uh, the interpreter of the interpreter. Everything can be broken uh, just because I, I, I do something wrong. Okay, good that means, uh, There are problems uh, that we are investigating about uh, the integration of the language features, since uh, one language uh, could behave in a way different uh, depending on uh, the composition with the which other uh, feature. As well as uh, agents, since we have several due to that, several agents uh, of uh, any book uh, could interact with each other or have any problem because the first one is removing something that the second one is Okay, other points are we need a lot of knowledge. 
the Chapeau was seeing it. We have to imagine the past three that could be what well, Neverland is having you since uh, there is one function that is generating and the show you the past three. But uh, a part of that uh, is still something that uh, is not for everyone. And you have to go inside of the, how an input is implemented. So you need the sun skill. And uh, well, last but not least, the adoption of Neverland, at least for the moment, is necessary. The idea is general, but we just put it on Neverland. This one is an academic project that is, it works, but uh, there is not big support for ID, for the buggers. Well, for the DSL that we are writing in Neverland, we are generating the ID as well. Uh, but it's just a new feature, so it's probably full of that. But, okay, what do we do for that? The, the problem of the future integration uh, at the level of the language, we've already tried to address it through a sort of type, if, uh, the type system that is checking, uh, is uh, inferring the type through the attributes of the things that we want to do. It is at least partially can solve the problem, or at least can work in some cases. Uh, well, of course, uh, if we do something wrong, there is nothing to do. We did that. So we, we don't have any solution at the moment, probably, well, I don't have any idea, too. But uh, uh, it's like, okay, we have the Y inside the language, this one can look forever, but we don't fix it in any way, generally, we, we correct the application after. Uh, for the agent interaction, this, uh, this is already solved in some sense, or at least partially. As I told, we could have a chain of agents connected to a node. What happens is that when one agent is doing something, if this is changing the context that was used to register the other agent, the agent is notified. And at that point, it could evaluate if the context is still valid, still holds for what it needs, and stay there, or otherwise can unregister. This one is not really they are not really cooperating to solve the problem, but at least we avoid to crash everything. Since at some point we detect that the condition is not what we want, and we can just unregister. Okay, what about needing for more information, or more skill? Okay, we are trying to support this. The idea is that we want to have an ID for developing this kind of stuff. Well, we are on the street. Uh, the, the road is still long, uh, but we have some idea to do that. Uh, this one is uh, our major future work in some sense. Uh, never mind, uh, would be a problem, but if someone wants to implement the idea in his own uh, tool, language or venture, we are able to collaborate about that. Okay, Isn't that, sorry, that's all. The one that I was showing here is more related to is more dynamic, dynamic since you are doing that during the execution and that it's just related to one node at a time. That depends what you are doing. So do you feel the need that you also need to instrument? I mean, the AST is one part, but then there are all the because you take a special state and memory like uh, arrays and objects. Do you feel the new instrument goes directly as well? Well, everything's uh, uh, for the what we can call the languages in that language as well. It is, uh, uh, as before, I was running a table, this one is implemented in Netherlands, and uh, you can uh, act on top of that as well. Uh, of course, it's not in the, in the Astro 3, but since you are writing a piece of Java code, you can work out of that as well. In the person sense example, for example, I was changing uh, the, the use of one. Uh, uh, what is it? Yeah, I was changing the use of the, the persistent class with another one. I 
was changing the name of slice. Okay. This, is, this, is, well, this is why the low level, since I changed all the things so that I can do any kind of thing. I was wondering whether uh, to the coordination of agents you could support things like uh, this is method 3 out of 400 being, uh, method invocation 3 out of 400 being executed now. Yeah. So, agents would be a bit more of a global view of the program. Well, uh, you have to think that we are speaking about the past day. So, what we do is a sort of a query. If you know a little bit of a spectrum programming, what we have done is writing a point up that is instead of using code, it's using path inside the path string. At that point, if you know where this code is happening, you can describe the, the, the context around it in some way. This is why we were saying that we need some knowledge, both of the interpreter but also of the everything that we want. But your pointers can quantify over all nodes in the program. It's not just that an agent is interacting or intervening at one It is intervening in one, well, it is a, the, the, when we express this pattern tree, we are saying which node that particular agent should be registered to. So it's not looking at all. We have a, the, the, the original tree should be like this. So this means that if I didn't have this kind of a rules that I have an agent everywhere. But since I do this kind of matching, I tailor it down my meta program in some sense. Just <coughs> in this case, this one is just this one thing. Yeah. But it's not that easy yet. Yeah. Well, I do that the easy way. Try to do that in this kind of way. In fact, the, 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 the work that we are doing now is just to find a way to specify these without constraint the tree. Yeah, I was, I was just wondering if the instrumentation overhead, like to insert these scopes, if this is, you know, any sort of... Well, the instrumentation overhead is not that heavy, considering that it is a quite, uh, our system is quite low in general. <laughs> so the, the, the instrumentation is not taking too much. Because the, the, the complexity is against the size of the program. If you are the, not, not of the interpreter of the final program that you want to run. So if you want to look at the field of this, normally it's not that huge. Yeah. So, do uh, this before and after the lines, if you have access to the states? Um, yeah, you have the states. Yeah, the states for us is the energy to do. And not meaning just for the state of the ASD, but uh, I assume the ASD represents a message, so there's also a message activation like train or something. So you also have access to the Okay, this one is a running model in some sense, and at some point this one is a real number, since uh, you have an attribute to the things representing what the Lexus collect uh, as a thread. So you have access to the state as well. So, okay. Okay, another question? Okay, then I have one. Yeah. Um, the fact that we use, or that we use agents in order to find the modifiers of the reflectors, is that because you will be able to create some terror? Yeah, efficiency dynamics. Mm, well, the main point is that we want to do that dynamically. We can do that uh, uh, over time, since uh, the, the agent can say, okay, now I don't change the, 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 the semantics of the class just because the attributes uh, count uh, five instead of six. So, <coughs> and the next one, let us do this one inside the agent, the next page, uh, the, the values are not changed, and uh, you want to do something. We want to represent also this case. The demo we had the last uh, year is a really nice demo since we have a demand number of implementation in JavaScript and we were running it inside a laptop with the idea to check the, the, the context in our case was the battery, the level of the battery 
So the, the point was, okay, we have this one running, we use the sequential for, and the, the drawing of the Mendel rocker was quite slow as expected. And uh, at some point, uh, we, we choose to just plug the laptop on the mains in order to provide more uh, energy to the system. And the idea was, okay, we have more energy, we can use all the cost that we have on the, on the hours view, and we substitute, dynamically substitute, the, the four, uh, the sequential four with the parallel one and the spread, since Mendelbrot is a good example, since the stages are independent, and we spread each of these stages in a different course, in, the, in different course. And this has immediately evidenced uh, that uh, there was a speed up in the, in the throw window of the stuff. We plugged the, 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 the mains again and we reverted back. So this kind of stuff is just because we have this agency that can be connected, they connected, and do things dynamically. Well, not only for the agents, since we can also change the things inside the tree, but uh, in general having this mechanism is more right, flexible than just the right thing to do. Probably it's less efficient, but it's a take-off. <coughs> okay, then let's thank you, Peter.